Hey folks, Fernando doing another video for the Modern Survivalist and this is a video dedicated to my friend Matt Bracken. Uh, some of you know we've been doing these live streams each uh, Saturday 3 p.m. Eastern Time. Yesterday we stayed talking even after two hours of, of live streaming and we ended up talking about uh, Argentine knives. He had seen a movie called The Gauchos Way and you can look it up in, in YouTube, it's available there. It's basically like a, like a 1950s movie about gauchos. Gauchos would be like the cowboys of uh, South America, right? And the distinct um, characteristic of the gaucho is his facon knife, which is basically a, a big knife. And if you're in any way interested in, in knives, you may have heard, of course, of, of the famous Bowie knife. Well, it's, it's interesting to notice how basically a, a facon is just a big knife, not all that different from the original uh, Bowie knife used by um, James Bowie in the um, uh, sandbar fight. You know, the actual knife used in that fight is very different from the clip point cross guard knife that we mostly associate with a Bowie knife, but this would be a typical facon knife, which is basically a big, large blade. And this is a traditional thing um, a gaucho would carry across his back. Just like this thing with, um, with a leather sheath. This would be like the, the classic thing an actual gaucho would have with no decoration. And we'll get to that in a second. But typically it was a leather sheath like this, about 12 inch blade, long, pointy, and it was intended to be his do everything knife. It was intended to be used mostly as a, as a, a you know, agricultural, farm, rural, working tool. So you'd see, I mean, right now if you look up gauchos, horses, and all this stuff, even till this day, you see gauchos with this sort of knife. Some will have more decorated blades, of course, these days, but traditionally, something like this would be the more common thing, especially gauchos were not exactly wealthy people, rather the opposite. So they would have um, a knife like this. What I find to be interesting is that um, this idea of this being the knife that they would have. If they had nothing, a gaucho had a horse and he had a knife. Uh, even the poorest gaucho would have that and maybe a poncho so as to cover himself and wrap it around one of his arms so as to use it as a shield in a fight. This is all, this is all very classic uh, blade fighting. Even back from the, the Spanish uh, traditional navaja fighting in which they would have these huge folding knives, like these ridiculously large folders that were like short swords and they would use that along with a cape, the, the famous cape and sword fighting would be basically the same thing. So the, the gaucho, um, giving the Spanish heritage, would be al strongly associated to that type of, of fighting. And well, this would be the knife he would use for just everything. Killing uh, animals, cooking, fighting, and one of those things would be preserving his honor or just settling scores. Now, this was done a lot, and I mean a lot more than you would traditionally see in the United States. The, the typical cowboy in the United States had a gun. The typical uh, gaucho in South America, he didn't have a gun. He was just too poor. He didn't have the money for the gun, the ammunition. Guns also had this reputation of, of not being as reliable as a piece of sharp steel. So this would be what he would use to settle a score. And depending on what kind of fight was um, and this was this was very often this was very common up to the point in which these type of knives got banned I think that at a certain period of time they got banned like on uh, on Sunday so that people would not get drunk and get into fights you know crazy st stupid laws like that would be yeah, a lot more common than, than you think but yeah you would not be separating a, a gaucho from his knife and if there was a dispute matter of honor you just go at it one at the other and usually was about first blood. Who draw first blood would be the actual winner and that would be it. You wouldn't go for a, an actual kill. In fact, if you actually got your mind clouded by rage and actually killed your your opponent in a matter of, of a minor dispute, you would um, dishonor yourself, you know, which is what the, the movie is about and it's the, well, the, the classic story 
story of Martin Fierro uh, is uh, very similar to what you see in that movie. So the idea was not to fight to actually kill the guy if you were settling a, a score. And of course, every once in a while, there was a matter of, yes, life and death, and it was just about killing the other guy, and, and that would happen. But these, this, this thing about settling scores at first blood was so common that Darwin, when he traveled along South America down even to Tierra del Fuego, which is the tip of South America at the end of the continent, he would mention that he see these locals all cut up across the face, nose missing, ears missing, cuts all over the body. And the reason for those cuts was that people would settle scores by fighting one another with knives. And yeah, <laughs> this, this is just the way it is. But going back to the place, it was a, a facon knife, what was a facon knife would be something like this, 12 inch, 15 inch blade would not be uncommon or even longer, although that would be more like a caronero type of sword, but the facon knife would be like a 12 inch blade, uh, inch and a half across. Not all that different from the sandbar uh, knife used by uh, Jim Bowie. So, um, besides this blade, which would be his main blade, and guys, they would use this for actually eating food. I'm not even joking. They would just grab the blade like this, and if they had to do like a detailed cutting, they go like this, and the knife was, of course, kept very sharp. If they had to cut their meat, they would just kill a cow, you know, cook it on fire, and just cut you know, straps of um, pieces of meat and just bite in and, you know, imagine your face is here, they would just grab a piece of meat and just bite it and cut the piece that, that uh, you know, the, the excess and just cut that and just chew it and that would be it. No fork, no nothing. It was just having the knife. Um, Besides that, of course, there were a few other knives. Now, there's uh, another very commonly used knife, and maybe the one more utilitarian would be the Verijero knife. Verijero because it would be carried up uh, front. So, you have your big gaucho belt, which usually, if you have any money, and, and money in those days were actual silver coins, you would just um, hook those silver coins, you know, make a few holes and just sew them to your belt and show that you actually had some wealth. There's also also this idea that it would also work like a you know a thick leather belt with coins uh, attached to it it would work like a kind of shield or protection for you know your abdomen for your the soft region of your torso so there's a little bit of that involved as well I don't know how much of that matter or not but yes you would see those very thick belts with very big buckles and coins to the sides but one of these tiny knives would be the verijero knife which would go up front and the verijero knife would be something like this. This is a true Berijero knife. Nothing fancy about it. It's one of the cheapest knives I ever bought. It's like two three bucks back in the day. And it's just a piece of bone. This is uh, from Nyandu. Nyandu, what is it? Like a big, like an ostrich kind of bird. And that's this is one of the legs of that bird, right? So it's a big, <laughs> big bird and it, it was used as a handle. And this is an old Argentine co a coin, brass back in the day. So yeah, that's what they, they use. And this is not a very old knife. It's old enough, but not, not super old. And yes, here's another coin as well. And this would be a typical tiny Verijero knife, which would be the typical companion of the Facon knife. You know, these two. This is also bone, as you notice, and this blade, the, the gaucho would make knives out of broken swords, bayonets, any chunk of steel they could come across. This is a, a little bit of a mystery steel, and if you know anything, just let me know. It says England, 1867, which does not, <laughs> I don't know what even th that means, because that seems to be all scratched in place. You know, super, yes, like scratched in place. Then at the same time, it says Sheffield, England. Now you get to see that. And it seems to be like poorly hammered in place. You know, you just don't know the truth about this thing, if it's real or not. If it's, there's a good chance that this is an actual old uh, uh, knife from some period or some tool or something. Um, it 
could be like counterfeit, could be, but it's a very strange steel. It's not high grade or anything. You see that the quality is, man, it has to be old because it is pretty inconsistent. Now, I'll say this, it is a tough blade and I've sharpened this to be razor sharp. This thing shaves. In spite of all the pitting that you see, all these, these little pits and holes that you see along the blade, in spite of that, it is super sturdy, very strong, and I understand why it held up all these years. Man, this video is gonna be super long and I'll try to hurry up. Then you would have the more um, ornament type of facon knife. These were made even out of, of machetes. And this is one that I came across very lucky um, in my search for this knife. I saw how this knife was, I followed the making of this knife online by a, you know, a craft man that was posting the process of, of how he made all of this. This all is silver, pure silver. And you see those legs right there, that cross shape. Again, this would be a modern rendition of a traditional Fagon knife. This would be like a luxury, so a, a gaucho or someone that has a bit more money or a lot more money would get a very nice fancy Fagon like this. And you know what? The Fagons were, you, you, they came in, in all sorts of, and as you see it says, Legitimo, because these were intended for the South American market, so they actually said legitimo, like legitimate, but in Spanish, Collins, uh, Machete, Collins made in US, and yeah, this would be a, an actual real Collins Machete, and the blade was used for making this facon. It's very thin, it's very narrow, but yeah, sure enough, this is something that it could actually be made back in the day and be used like that. Maybe one of the more traditional, nicer looking facons would be something along these lines. So this is not silver, this is alpaca, which is a little bit of silver with nickel or I don't know what the hell is it's mixing. You know, look it up, alpaca would be like a shiny metal like this and would have more of a traditional blade. This is, again, a, a very much traditional facon knife. Long blade. These were, yes, of course, intended mostly for fighting and that sort of thing, but in, used for a number of uh, things. Remember that um, the gaucho did not have, uh, very rarely did he have an, an actual firearm, a revolver, a rifle. He would have uh, uh, a knife like this, maybe a longer knife, and you know, probably a spear again. Yeah, that sort of thing would be. And this is actually a blade forged in Argentina by this firm Atahualpa, made in, in Tandil, a city that is known for making uh, blades and that sort of thing, Industria Argentina. And an interesting fact is that these blades, you would buy these and this, the handle, especially if you had like something like that, like a nice um, silver handle, the idea was that the tang would go all the way here and this would be hammered in place. Now what happens with the insides of this, this was all tar. Tar, you know, like the black stuff you see on uh, on roads. Well, this was all filled with with tar, and the tang would go all the way through. And once it cooled down, they would just hammer it in place, and that's it. And you would be thinking, well, that doesn't sound super strong. Well, no, it's not all that strong, but it has the advantage of being easy to replace. So if you broke the blade, all you had to do would be warm up the handle, and once this softened, you just had to cut. The button that you have here, just pull it out and you replaced it with a new blade. Again, same thing, you fill it up with tar, you wait until it cools down, you hammer it in place, and you have, and it's actually a very strong, successful <laughs> way of making knives because this is time proven for hundreds of years that they've been made this way. And man, you know, it just works. If it didn't work, they wouldn't have been using it for nearly as long as they did with good results. This, yeah, would be a, a fine, this is an, an actual very nicely balanced knife. This facon is very light in the hand. It's just, would be great for fighting. You know, something very fast and you know, stabby for sure. So yeah, this would be one of those. And of course, another uh, verijero. Sometimes in Argentina, sometimes these are called facon as well. But no, the, the proper term would be verijero knife. Again, same thing, narrow tang goes all the way through. In this case, it has a little bit of a cap. And this is alpaca, again, not actual silver, but these would be very common in Argentina. Again, same brand, Atahualpa blade. 
All of these are carbon steel, of course, and yeah, you would just have to take care of it, make sure it didn't you know, rust or anything, but no stainless steel. All of this is a, a carbon steel blades. Uh, then, of course, the, the traditional boleadoras. These are actual boleadoras made so as to actually be used. This is just rock and skin. Actually, I think this is from the testicles uh, of the bull. And the way in which these are made is the traditional way, which is two larger ones and one smaller one, so as to actually you know, deploy them properly. But these are very sturdy. I have a couple of these that I got you know, somewhere at some time, in some period of time, at some point in life. But these are super, super solid. And yeah, real, actual boleadoras. You have more decorated ones, but this is like, like the real deal thing. Traditional, intended to be used. I mean, these are things that many people will still be using um, you know, maybe you don't see guys with, you don't see gauchos, and the actual real gaucho, would, which would be like semi-savage guy living off the land, you don't see all that much. You see a lot of paisanos, like guys that they, they dress up like gauchos, they have the knife, but they just are rural folks that work in the fields and just live uh, out in the country. You know, country people from Patagonia, and they just work with horses, with cattle, whatever that is, and just, you know, the, the traditional folks from uh, from the country, but the actual gaucho would be almost like an outlaw. The, the real gaucho from the eight, 1700s or, or even back further would be a semi outlaw, mestizo, half Spanish, half Indian, barefoot almost type of guy. That sort of stuff. Um, one of the things Matt was asking me about uh, mate. Mate is basically this. It's like almost like a grass looking, very strong tea from South America. I actually drink mate pretty much every day and you drink it throughout the day it's just like a very strong tea i guess and no one likes it unless you are from south america because it's super um <laughs> what's it like very very strong taste yeah very sour yeah if you're a little bit more delicate some people put a little bit of sugar in it but man that that is just disgraceful and finally i have something that's not even made in south america but it's just a beautiful blade that i have that it was intended well it's this is a um uh, this is a machete for the argentine artillery uh army in 1898 beautiful blade one of one of the my best looking knives that i have bar none. These were made in Solingen, Wayne's, if, well, you can actually read that, right? So that's where it's made. That's the actual seal of back when Argentina was one of the most successful, thriving economies in the planet. Yes, folks, there was such a time. It was, at a time, it was one of the top five economies in the world. So they would do this sort of thing. They would buy the best weapons, the best knives, the best steel, the best Mauser rifles, 1909 Mausers uh, from, uh, you know, made in Germany for the Argentine army. They would buy state-of-the-art, top-of-the-line Mausers that make the typical German Mauser that you've seen look like a piece of crap because it was very finely made peacetime period type of Mausers beautiful rifles but you know that's just, just a, a little bit of you know history from Argentina folks I hope you enjoy this little tour of some of these traditional things from uh, Argentina have an awesome day see you on the next video